p.m. I will now call the select board meeting on October 19th at 7 p.m. to order. And I will start us off by reading the, or by saying, sorry, the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, so on the agenda tonight, um, we have our first appointment at 7.05 uh, with Town Council to address the open meeting law complaint. Um, so we have about four minutes now. Um, so uh, Rick, did you get a chance to review the open meeting? Yes. Um, law complaint. Um, is there anything you want to discuss or talk about before I ask Kathy and Town Council questions? No. Okay. Um, so, Kathy, um, I know Chris was unable to be here tonight because yes. he's sick. Yes, and I did talk to him and uh, to address this open meeting violation, the, the town administrator recommends that the board turns it over to town council. Okay. And um, Glenn is unable to be here tonight, too, because of a family emergency, so it will just be Rick and I tonight. Um, So we still have a few more minutes. I'm just gonna look it over and just see if there's any questions I have besides what was written. So I know we have another minute before um, town council. Um, from the complaint that was written um, on here, it seems like it's a lot of just being more specific. So that's what I get from it. We just need to be a little bit more specific on. I think we should wait till 7.05. Well, no, but we're talking. Oh. Town okay. council is at 7.05. So we can talk about it. Yes. I, I <laughs> so it looks like that. we have to be a little bit more specific on how we on our postings and make sure that we write review and approve um, for departmental meetings, for minutes, and make sure we put the dates on the minutes that we are reviewing and approving. So that's what I, yeah. I got from most of it. Um, and then of course we'll, you know, at seven oh five we'll make sure that we talk to Tom Council and see what his yeah, I feel like when we go to executive state session, that's general law. Has to be in there. Yeah, and, and either and the person or the position. That.
All right, so it is now 7.05, so we will turn it over to town council and see uh, what advice you have for us. Certainly. Uh, Brian O'Toole, town council, Brian and Boudreau, South Hadley. Um, to back up a little bit, the, uh, the purpose of this meeting here is that pursuant to the open meeting law, which is found at uh, Mass General Laws Chapter 30A, Sections 18 through 25, I believe, as well as um, uh, the CMRs, um, Code of Massachusetts Regulations. Um, I think it's, uh, I should have this a little bit better here, um, 920. Um, the board, or 940, sorry. Uh, the board is to meet uh, within 14 business days um, to review the complaint, take remedial action if appropriate, and send the complaint a response and a description of any remedial action to, to take. Of course, it, it, if it was the feeling of the board that uh, no violation occurred, they, they would respond in that um, regard. Another option would be that the board um, could turn it over to a designee, um, whether that was the town administrator or town council, to respond on behalf of the board. Um, but prior to doing that, they, they would have to meet within those 14 days um, and actually take a vote and, and authorize that person to do it. Um, this um, open meeting complaint from a Patrick Higgins um, is dated, um, it looks like it was sub submitted by email on October 6th. And again, we're talking 14 business days, um, which so that does not include the weekends or the most recent um, holiday that we had last week. Um, but we're certainly running short of time. Um, I have, um, in anticipation of this, begun um, a response uh, to the uh, um, to the six individual complaints contained in the um, in the form in the form complaint um, but I think I would need some additional time especially as it pertains to number three um, which states did not properly list the executive session on the agenda and that it only states 30a-21-a2 the writer assumes that they meant to enter executive session under chapter 30A, section 21A, subsection two, but the public body further violated the open meeting law by not listing the name and or title of the non-union personnel to be discussed in the executive session. Um, um, understanding that, um, that the minutes um, have yet to be um, created and approved for that, um, I don't know that I can respond at least to the, um, to the second part of that inquiry. Um, um, so it, it would be my intention if, if the board were so inclined to designate me as the individual responsible for responding, I, I, tomorrow morning I would, res I would request in writing of the AG's office some additional time, um, not much, okay, probably sometime maybe end of next week or so to give the select board additional time uh, to review those minutes and to approve them um, so that I can uh, properly address the concern there. Um, I certainly have my initial thoughts that, um, that the notice itself in the announcement that was made at the, uh, at the September 7th hearing most likely would not pass the Attorney General's muster in terms of um, whether or not um, the, uh, the listing of that topic um, had su sufficient specificity to reasonably advise the public of the issues to be discussed at, the, uh, at that executive session. Okay, um, so, uh, and if, if, the, if the board wanted to also review um, my, my proposed response, you know, we, we may even have to wait until after then because I wouldn't be able to respond. But as, as uh, um, Ms. Dufresne indicated here, the six items here really have to do with 
uh, other than number six really have to do with um, does the um, posted uh, notice of the meeting, uh, does it have that specificity to let the, 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 the reasonable, reasonable citizen at large understand uh, what, the, um, uh, what the board is going to be discussing at that particular meeting? Um, now, it doesn't have to get into the minutia, and, and the notice really has to indicate what the chair reasonably anticipates to be discussed 48 hours in advance. Um, I would assume that, um, just to use this particular notice, um, that um, the items listed there um, is what the, the chair reasonably anticipated to be discussed. Um, but it probably, reading that there, what members of the board, uh, the town administrator, um, department heads, people that are often within this uh, room at these meetings would probably understand. But would the person um, on Smith Avenue uh, who doesn't but wants to look in just to see if that's something that they'd be interested, would they be able to tell? Um, that's still something I'm formulating in my mind here, but regardless of which way I would choose to respond, I think it would, it, it, it would behoove uh, the, the not just the select board, but all other committees in town here. This is probably a good reminder um, to, to um, review how we've been uh, doing things here. A and um, as, the, uh, as Mr. Higgins indicated, what action do you want the public body to take in response to this complaint? Learn and comply with the open meeting line. I think that's something that we all want to do, um, and which we're all directed to do um, as elected officials. Um, so I think this is a, a good chance to, uh, for us to uh, uh, stop and uh, think about how things um, have been done and how they should be done going forward. Um, so with that in mind, in terms of the notices there, I think what and it's, and it's and this isn't something that ultimately falls on um, on the town administrator or the town or the assistant to the town administrator here. The statute and the CMRs put it on the public body itself, um, and uh, that being in this case here the select board. Um, so that um, it, if a draft is sent, it's not just to be either I want to say rubber stamp, but it, it should be looked at. And if the select board, you know. Um, feels that it should have more information, um, it could either send those um, directions or um, do it themselves because event eventually it will be the board itself that is held to account. Um, so um, th there, there, are some th there are some items, again, initially that I, I feel are not, um, that there was not a violation. Some that are that, in my opinion, again, um, I would advise the board, such as number three, that I think clearly are. Um, and then there are some things in between there, um, namely, and just for for brevity here, um, number four and number five having to do with uh, considering the acceptance of minutes um, or the consideration of certain uh, common. I can never pronounce this vitular <laughs> licenses. I, I did have a chance to review the uh, um, the the GCAM YouTube video on this, and, and I noted that uh, um, there was a lull in the action. And uh, Mr. Sexton uh, just asked the uh, town administrator, "Is it um, on the common Vic licenses? Uh, it, is there anything we can do in in the meantime?" And the town administrator noted that there had been some common uh, VIC licenses that came through uh, after the posting of the warrant, and that's something that the chair did not reasonably anticipate uh, to be discussed 48 hours prior to the posting of the notice, and didn't anticipate it until he just asked the question whether or not there was any business that the board could um, address. Um, so I don't think that that would be um, a violation of the open meeting law as it pertains to the, to the posting requirement. Um, but again, that I, I think there are things that 
um, that can be done better and uh, in terms of the notice what it what what the actual notice because again that that gives the public at large it's supposed to give them a, an idea of what's to be discussed let's say and again it's just an example here it has nothing to do with this here let's say new business traffic concerns but if the, if the real issue was going to be the traffic concerns at five corners we should note in that uh in in the uh uh in the public notice tra traffic concerns at five corners um you don't have to necessarily get into what traffic concerns because again what what are we talking about the notice shouldn't have to be five pages or, or, or 20 pages long here, but I think we, we'd have an idea whether, with a smell test, uh, whether or not the, the notice is specific enough to give someone an idea of what's to, what's to be discussed. And certainly if, if there are any questions, um, they can certainly be directed my way prior, but hopefully we're able to craft something uh, or, or, you know, some procedure here where we don't have to be asking town council uh, for every uh, meeting notice that goes out here. Uh, um, um. I do have one question, Mr. O'Toole. So the, um, when the minutes or when the, I'm sorry, when the posting is created, mm -hmm. now because we're only a three select board body, we're not allowed to share things through um, email or anything like that because it would be a violation of open meeting law so if the chair drafts this and he wants us to check to see if it's specific enough that's usually why we go through the town administrator and the town um, assistant right so that we're not doing emails back and forth back and forth so how would we would we do it that same way so would he so if Glenn's drafting it or if I'm drafting it would we then email it to them to email it to the rest of the select board or because it, it's minute it's an agenda it's okay I just want to make sure I'm not gonna be in violation of that yeah well. <laughs> it, it it is a thin line yes. right um, yes. in terms of you know what deliberation entails and right. and and the open media law lets you know what deliberation is. Uh, now, certainly, if anyone's offering their opinions, well, that's something a little bit um, different. But if we were just to go to the definition of deliberation, um, an oral or written communication through any medium, including electronic mail, between or among a quorum of a public body, and again, a quorum in this case being two out of three, on any public business within its jurisdiction, provided, however, that deliberation shall not include, so it's gonna tell us right here what it doesn't include. The distribution of a meeting agenda, scheduling information or distribution of other procedural meeting or the distribution of reports or documents that may be discussed at a meeting, provided that no opinion of a member is expressed. Now, in general, to be safe rather than sorry, it, it's generally the, the chair that dictates the uh, the agenda of the meeting, okay? Um, so that if there were if there were something that uh, the other two members wanted to discuss, then yes, they they should contact. Again, to be on the side of caution, um, they, they they should request um, uh, that the town administrator consider uh, putting that on, okay? Um, now. There's obviously some practical considerations here, right? That uh, we can't, you know, a, a game of telephone also doesn't work. Um, but generally it's the, uh, um, if, if somebody wanted something on the, and again, I, I hesitate to give an opinion on hypotheticals here, but it, if somebody wanted to put something on the agenda, stated that they wanted the, on the agenda, but didn't give their opinion as to why they wanted it on the agenda, yeah, maybe okay. Okay. Um, but again, I don't want to go too far off the uh, uh, the topic yeah. here for this yeah. particular open, uh, it, and that's my fault. I kind of went off on the tangent there. Um, Thank you very much for um, walking us through that. So. Um, I would suggest two things yeah. um, that uh, 
the board to entertain a motion uh, to designate me as the individual to respond to the September 7th, 2022 open meeting law complaint by a Mr. Robert Patrick. Higgins. Higgins. Um, and to uh, Patrick. 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 <laughs> I knew I had it wrong somewhere there. Um, and to also uh, take any action um, there with. Um, to answer the complaint. To answer the complaint and also, uh, again, any other action in furtherance there with. Specifically, uh, um, I, I would be requesting, I think, um, some additional time from the AG's office to respond. Um, especially as it pertains to the to the third item yeah. uh, regarding the ex the executive session there which um, again I, I, in my belief looking at um, some of the other opinions that the AG's office has put out um, that uh, what was put in the posted notice um, um, was not adequate uh, but to give time because I don't know until those uh, whether or not the board did have a reason not to list the individual i think i think we're i think we're already in violation regardless um by not listing the individual yeah, what I read, that's what it seems like yeah, yeah. yes or uh, the title the, yeah. the, the name the or the title yeah. and as um you may know um what is considered purpose two of the executive uh, of the reasons going to executive session it has three different um reasons for going into it under purpose two um and that being um i keep on going back forth back and forth here um either a strategy session and preparation for negotiations with non-union personnel being one to conduct collective bargaining sessions being number two or to conduct contract negotiations with non-union personnel um, so, um, at, at the very least, um, the uh, um, purpose two should have been uh, delineated and for which of the three purposes in purpose two, um, regardless of whether or not the individual or the title should have been named. Um, I think, um, and, and I may, quite honestly, I may not even need that the more that I think about it, um, because that there was a violation, I believe, um, unintended. Um, and, and I suppose the other question would be, um, would the board want to see before I submitted it, um, or, or, um, would, or would the board entrust me with, uh, submitting, uh, an answer with proposed, um, uh, remedies without the board's input? the first motion. Let's make a motion. Okay. Put a town council to do all the things that he just stated to us. To respond like a, to, to the, the uh, to the complaint to the and everything else that's evolved into that. Okay. Yeah, so I didn't write it all down. I apologize. That, that's okay. Right. So, the, um, so I will second that motion. Um, and any further discussion no uh, well yes okay yeah to answer the last one i yeah. i would like to see you see it before you send something out okay so that that will require us to come together yeah. again you know uh, um so we're we can we uh, yeah we have to meet as a body or can you well, you're you, you, like you could, right up and said the answer to this complaint. Would it be? Uh, can we see it? Can you just email it to us? I could certainly. Not a violation. Well, I don't think it would be it, coming from me. It wouldn't be a violation. I'm not a member of the public body. Yeah. Okay, but you couldn't dis discuss it over email. You would just get it. Get it. Yeah. Okay. Now, if if there are proposed changes, okay, then we'd have to. Meet. That, then I think. You would have to, and even then, if there were, if everyone consented that there were no proposed changes, uh, I think the best course of action, quite honestly, is to see if I can 
get the extra time. Get some extra time so that, and quite honestly, I probably have 85% of this done. Most of it has to deal with um, item number three. Um, and um, I'm comfortable enough after uh, reviewing, uh, even not knowing uh, what was discussed you know, in the executive session, that at least the notice requirements were deficient. Um, so that, um, you know, whether or not that leads to any other uh, questions right. would be for another time. But I think uh, um, from what I understand, um, that particular matter has um, been put to bed. The only other question then is whether or not um, the purpose uh, of the executive session has been completed and for the minutes to be approved and um, and for the determination to be made that those should be made public as well, which I think will answer a lot of questions uh, as to whether or not the purpose of going into executive session was appropriate. So we would still have to meet again because we got to we got to approve the minutes, from, me, the minutes right? from the executive that, session. In order for me to, I believe, fully answer no. uh, that third item regarding the executive session of September 7th, we need the minutes. Yeah. yes. We are going to try to meet sometime next week, probably Wednesday or Thursday. We still right. have to talk to Glenn. So um, we'll have to first, so Glenn and I, or sorry, Glenn, sorry, Rick and I just, um, Made a, or he made a motion, I second that motion to approve town council to take the lead on this for us um, and to request extra time from the AG's office so that we can adequately respond to number three. And um, I know Rick wants to see the end draft of what you send. I think we should know it. Yeah, man, I, I don't think I'm gonna see a problem. I know your work and then I'm not a Right it, but I think we need to know what, what's getting submitted on our behalf. Right, on our behalf, yeah. And um, then we will have to meet, type up the executive session minutes, meet, review them, yep. vote on them before we can adequately answer number three. So when, so if we, um, if you request extra time from the AG's office tomorrow, when will you hear back from them to know whether or not we got that extra time? Well, it's it's difficult to say. Okay. I, I'm, I'm hoping that by email it's easier. Um, um, despite it being October of 2022, um, many uh, state agencies I know are still working remotely. Um, but certainly the request has to be in writing. So my, my uh, um, my plan would be, after I've been authorized, that tomorrow morning um, I, I contact the uh, uh, Division of Open Government uh, of the AG's office uh, to request that time, indicating to them that I was authorized to respond on their behalf tonight. Right. Um, and that um, I'm requesting X number of days um, an extension um, in order to uh, reply uh, to I Mr. Higgins' yeah. um, complaint in full, because again, there are six items on there. Um, and while I believe most of them can be addressed, now they may say, okay, submit your response on one, two, three, and uh, okay. four, five, uh, one, two, four, five, six. That may be something that they indicate, although they, they, they've been relatively, in the past, they've been relatively uh, generous with giving time, but again, not a lot of time. Right. Um, it may give us some time to, to meet once more. Okay, so um, I would probably suggest, uh, I don't know that reviewing the uh, um, executive session minutes would take all that much time it could be something that could take place at this same meeting we open up in op in open session um and, and i'll work with the board and, and the administration in terms of ensuring that uh, 
that that the public notice um, is uh, um, drafted properly and, and with specificity. Um, at that executive session, they can be um, reviewed, approved, as well as um, so long as the board believes that uh, uh, the purpose of executive session has expired, make those um, um, those executive session minutes public. now public. Okay. And then we can then, once that's been done, then address any other issues as it pertains to the response. Okay. All right, so I know we made a motion to have him, um, to make him yeah. leave, but now we have the vote on it. Aye. So all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, so um, thank you for doing that and taking the lead for us on it. Um, and we are going to try to have a meeting on Wednesday of next week. Um, 5.30, Kathy will try. Can you do yep. that, Rick? Next I'm open. I can, yeah. Okay, yeah. so we'll just wait to hear back from Glenn then yeah. and see if he can also do Wednesday as well. Yeah. Um, and we'll plan on having you back then. Um, and if the AG's office yeah. wants us to respond to one, two, um, four, five, and six. I think, like you said, we have a, we know what we need to do with the specificity of the posting and stuff, so we can definitely change that um, on this posting and moving forward to make sure that we're we are um, complying with open meeting law. And then number three would be the only one that we would need a little more time on. That that's the only one based upon my review of the complaint. Uh, the notice itself, the minutes, and reviewing the video that I don't think I could adequately address. Um, the others, I think I, I think I already have a draft okay. um, ready to go. Okay. Before we set next Wednesday in stone, yeah, mm -hmm. I think we need to check with Mr. Sexton. First oh yes, he's no, gonna she's gonna. Yeah. I'm going to. But I'm available any night next week. Okay, thank you. No meeting for nothing going on, so. Okay. Perfect. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Appreciate it. What were the others besides? Oh, sorry. Sorry. Before you go. Yep. Uh, 3821. Didn't you say 38? 30 38. 30A. 30 Mass chapter 30A, 30 30 but then there Sections was 18 through 25. 18 through 25. Yeah. Thank you. I get 21 or not. All right, so the other um, piece on our agenda is new business and information. So we are to approve and sign the November 8th, 2022 election warrant. So um, I will read it unless you fight me for it, <laughs> if you wanted to read it. <laughs> but. Um, all right, so Commonwealth of Massachusetts, William Francis Galvin, Secretary of the Commonwealth, Town of Granby, Granby Warrant for the two, um, 2022 state election. So to one of the constables of the Town of Granby in the County of Hampshire, greetings. In the name of the Commonwealth, you are hereby required to notify and warn the inhabitants of said town who are qualified to vote in the state election to vote at the Granby Junior Senior High School at 385 East State Street in said town for precincts one, two, and two A. On Tuesday, the eighth day of November, 2022, from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. for the following purpose, to cast their votes in the state election for the candidates for the following offices and questions. Governor and Lieutenant Governor for this Commonwealth, Attorney General for this Commonwealth, Secretary of State for this Commonwealth, Treasurer for this Commonwealth, Auditor for this Commonwealth, Representative in Congress, 1st District, Counselor, 8th District, Senator in General Court, 1st Hamden, Hampshire, and Worcester District, Representative in General Court, 3rd Hampshire District, Precinct 1 and Precinct 2A, Representative in General Court, 2nd Hampshire District, Precinct 2, District Attorney, Northwestern District, Sheriff, Hampshire County, Regional School Committee, Pathfinder. 
You may vote for every position on the Pathfinder Regional Vocational Technical School District Committee regardless of where you reside in the district. Question one, proposed amendment to the Constitution. Do you approve of the adoption of an amendment to the Constitution summarized below, which, is a, which was approved by the General Court in joint sessions of the two houses on June 12, 2019, uh, years 147 to nays 48, and again on June 9, 2021, years 159 to nays 41. This proposed constitutional amendment would establish an additional 4% state income tax on that portion of annual taxable income in excess of 1 million. This income level would be adjusted annually by the same method used for federal income tax brackets to reflect increases in the cost of living. Revenues from this tax would be used subject to appropriation by the state legislature for public education, public colleges and universities, and for the repair and maintenance of roads bridges and public transportation. The proposed amendment would apply to tax years beginning on or after January 1st, 2023. A yes vote would amend the state constitution to impose an additional 4% tax on that portion of incomes over $1 million to be used, subject to appropriation by the state legislature on education and transportation. A no vote would make no change in the state constitution relative to income tax. Question two, law proposed by initiative petition. Do you approve of a law summarized below on which no vote was taken by the Senate or the House of Representatives on or before May 3rd, 2022? Summary, this proposed law would direct the commissioner of the Massachusetts Division of Insurance to approve or disapprove the rates of dental benefit plans and would require that the dental insurance carrier meet an annual aggregate medical loss ratio for its covered dental benefit plans of 83%. The medical loss ratio would measure the amount of premium administrative expenses. If a career's annual aggregate medical loss ratio is less than 83%, the carrier would be required to refund the excess premiums to its covered individuals and groups. The proposed law would allow the commissioner to waive or adjust the refunds only if it is determined that issuing refunds would result in financial impairment for the carrier. The proposed law would apply to dental benefit plans regardless of whether they are issued directly by a carrier, though the connector, or through an intermediary. The proposed law would not apply to dental benefit plans issued, delivered, or renewed to a self-insured group or where the carrier is acting as a third-party administrator. The proposed law would require the carriers offering dental benefit plans to submit information about their current and projected medical loss ratio, administrative expenses, and other financial information to the commissioner. Each carrier would be required to submit an annual comprehensive financial statement to the Division of Insurance, itemized by market group size and line of business. A carrier that also provides administrative services to one or more self-insured groups would also be required to file an appendix to their annual financial statement with information about its self-insured business. The proposed law would impose a late penalty on a carrier that does not file its annual report on or before April 1st. The division would be required to make the submitted data public to issue an annual summary to certain legislative committees and to exchange the data with the Health Policy Commission. The commissioner would be required to adopt standards requiring the registration of persons or entities not otherwise licensed or registered by the commissioner and criteria for the standardized reporting and uniform allocation methodologies among carriers. The proposed law would allow the commissioner to approve dental benefit policies for the purpose of being offered to individuals or groups. The commissioner would be required to adopt regulations to determine eligibility criteria. The proposed law would require carriers to file group product base rates and any changes to group rating factors that are to be effective on January 1st of each year on or before July 1st of the preceding year. The commissioner would be required to dis disapprove any proposed changes to base rates that are excessive, inadequate, or unreasonable in relation to the benefits charged. The commissioner would also be required to disapprove any change to group rating factors that is discriminatory or not actuarially sound. 
The proposed law sets forth criteria that, if met, would require the commissioner to presumptively disapprove a carrier's rate, including if the aggregate medical loss ratio for all dental benefit plans offered by a carrier is less than 83 percent. The proposed law would establish procedures to be followed if a proposed rate is presumptively disapproved and if the commissioner disapproves a rate. The proposed law would require the division to hold a hearing if a carrier reports a risk-based capital ratio on a combined entity basis that exceeds 700% in its annual report. The, propose, the proposed law would require the commissioner to prom, promulgate um, regulations consistent with its provisions by October 1st, 2023. The proposed law would apply to all dental benefit plans issued, made effective, delivered, or renewed on or after January 1st, 2024. A yes vote would regulate dental insurance rates, including by requiring companies to spend at least 83% of premiums on member dental expenses and quality improvements instead of administrative expenses and by making other changes to dental insurance regulations. A no vote would make no change in the law relative to the regulations that apply to dental insurance companies. That was a lot. <laughs> Question three, law proposed by initiative petition. Do you approve of a law summarized below on which no vote was taken by the Senate or the House of Representatives on or before May 3rd, 2022? Summary, this proposed law would increase the statewide limits on the combined number of licenses for the sale of alcoholic beverages for off-premises consumption, including licenses for all alcoholic beverages and for wines and malt beverages that any one retailer could own or control from nine to 12 licenses <coughs> in 2023 to 15 licenses in 2027 and to 18 licenses in 2023 or 2031, sorry. So beginning in 2023, the proposed law would set a maximum number of all alcoholic beverages licensed that any one retailer could, con could own or control at seven licenses, unless a retailer currently holds more than seven such licenses. The pro proposed law would require retailers to conduct the sale of alcoholic beverages for off-premises consumption through face-to-face -face transactions and would prohibit automated or self-checkout sales of alcoholic beverages by such retailers. The proposed law would alter the calculation of the fine that the Alcoholic Beverages Control Commission may accept in lieu of suspending any license issued under the State Liquor Control Act. The proposed law would modify the formula for calculating such fee from being based on the gross profits on the sale of alcoholic beverages to being based on the gross profits on all retail sales. The proposed law would also add out-of-state motor vehicle licenses to the list of the forms of identification that any holder of a license issued under the State Liquor Control Act or their agent or employee may choose to reasonably rely on for proof of a person's identity and age. A yes vote would increase the number of licenses a retailer could have for the sale of alcoholic beverages to be consumed off-premises, limit the number of all alcoholic beverages licenses that a retailer could acquire, restrict use of self-checkout, and require retailers to accept customers out of state identification. A no vote would make no change in the laws governing the retail sale of alcoholic beverages. Question four, referendum on an existing law. Do you approve of a law summarized below, which was approved by the House of Representatives and the state on May 26, 2022? Summary. This law allows Massachusetts residents who cannot provide proof of lawful presence in the United States to obtain a standard driver's license or a learner's permit if they meet all of the other qualifications for a standard license or learner's permit, including a road test and insurance, and provide proof of their identity, date of birth, and residency. The law provides that when processing an application for such a license or learner's permit or motor vehicle registration, the registrar of Motor vehicles may not ask about or create a record of the citizenship or immigration status of the applicant, except as otherwise required by law. This law does not allow people who cannot provide proof of lawful presence in the United States to obtain a real ID. To prove identity and date of birth, the law requires an applicant to present at least two documents, one from each of the following categories. One, a valid unexpired foreign passport or a valid unexpired consular identification document and two, a valid unexpired driver's license from any United States state or territory, 
an original or certified copy of birth certificate, a valid unexpired foreign national identification card, a valid unexpired foreign driver's license, or a marriage certificate or divorce decree issued by any state or territory of the, of the United States. One of the documents presented by an applicant must include a photograph and one must include a, a date of birth. Any documents not in English must, must be accompanied by a certified translation. The registrar may review any documents issued by another country to determine whether they may be used as proof of identity or date of birth. The law requires that applicants for a driver's license or learner's permit shall attest under the pains and penalties of perjury that their license has not been suspended or revoked in any other state, country, or jurisdiction. The law specifies that information provided by or relating to any applicant or license holder will not be a public record or and shall not be disclosed except as required by federal law or as authorized by attorney general regulations and except for purposes of motor vehicle insurance. The law directs the registrar of motor vehicles to make regulations regarding the documents required of United States citizens and others who provide proof of lawful pre presence with their license application. The law also requires the registrar and the secretary of the Commonwealth to establish procedures and regulations to ensure that an applicant for a standard driver's license or learner's permit who does not provide proof of lawful presence will not be automatically registered to vote. The law takes effect on July 1st, 2023. A yes vote would keep in place the law which would allow Massachusetts residents who cannot provide proof of lawful presence in the United States to obtain a driver's license or permit if they meet the other requirements for doing so. A no vote would repeal this law. Here of fail not and make return of this warrant with your doings thereon on the town clerk at the time and place of said voting. So given under our hands this 19th day of October 2022. That's it. Need a motion? Yes. I would entertain a motion at this time. I make a motion that we approve and sign the November 8th, 2022 election warrant. I will second that motion. Any more discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. Aye. It's a lot of reading. It, it was a lot of reading. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So. And I already read them because obviously they're, it's coming up. So it was a nice little review, I guess. <laughs> Just another copy of it. Yeah, so two copies. All right, so Kathy White, he's signing that. We will um, wait to hear back from you for the next meeting to see when Glenn can do it. Yes. Um, and I think the only day I can't do next week is Monday. Okay. Um, I already have a prior engagement for my daughter on that day, so, uh, but I can do the other days. Okay. And then you said every day is good for you next week? Yep. Okay. So we'll just wait to hear back from Glenn. All right. So I will entertain a motion to end the meeting. Unless it. there's something else that you want to talk about or you want to uh -huh. add to the agenda for next meeting. I want to... Yeah, I want for the next meeting. I want to talk about uh, Cindy Watts and then the houses, the antique houses that are supposed to move out of a bay and over to the West Street building. Okay. Okay. Just get an update on it. Just an update. That's it. Okay. I'll make a motion that we adjourn. I will second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye.